going on? It's your boy Big Kes. I'm back. I know uh I know I've been gone for a minute. Uh I ran into some uh some medical issues, man, for myself, man. But uh but for the most part, man, I'm doing all right, man. Uh, back, you know, back to my old self again. But uh uh I have another video for y'all for all my subscribers, man. And uh, for the people who has not subscribed, uh, I appreciate it, man. If you uh, like, subscribe to my channel and look, you know, to my other videos, man, because I got a lot of different type of videos going on. But this specific video, you know, I had a subscriber, man, who uh, mentioned that uh, he wanted me to talk about this one topic. So uh, that's the reason why I'm breaking this this uh this video you know so like i said you know to all my subscribers or anybody uh if uh y'all want me to talk about a certain uh topic or anything man just comment below man let me know and i'll do my best and uh try to fulfill that you know what i'm saying so uh after all that let's get it so uh first and foremost uh i'm from san Antonio, man san antonio texas down south dirty dirty south you know what i'm saying so i'm from the roots out here about this topic man you know uh about this issue i'm talking about well it's not an issue man it's it's just uh about you know you know gangs and stuff man that's going down over here at the dirty dirty south over here in san Antonio. And uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to make this short video in regards to uh, the Mexican Mafia, man, and, and the Orejones, the Tango Orejones. Uh, the Tango Orejones, there were about, uh, I, I don't know if y'all seen that video. I'm, I'm sure most of y'all seen that video about uh, Takashi 6 9 when uh, he was supposed to play, uh, come out here, down here. And playing Houston, and uh, and after Houston, he was supposed to uh, come down to San Antonio, San Antonio. <clears throat> but uh, at that time, you know, Takashi Six Nine was talking all that, you know, that nonsense, man, uh, about test my tour gang, uh, test my gangster tour, and all, you know, and all that crazy shit that he can't be touched, that he don't have to. Uh, to report or he don't have to touch base to anybody you know what i'm saying and but that uh that that deal was going out about him being a pedophile so uh the tango de Jones, uh they're from down here from down south from san antonio man uh this is the this is where they you most i mean this is where the roots are at man san antonio so uh that they had mentioned in the video that if he comes down, man, that they were he, he was gonna get pumped, man. But uh, something it it it, it kind of sour, man. Uh, they got arrested at the airport, so uh, Sananto took an L that that time, man. Takashi ended up coming in, uh, playing uh, at that one spot, so he ended up coming, man. So uh, I guess uh, the Tango de Hornets took an L that day, man. They got caught up. And uh, the one dude that made that video, well, he got arrested. <clears throat> Some other cat got arrested, but they they got him for, for a, a fucked up felony, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for what he mentioned in that video, man. So, you, you know, you got to be careful, man, about what you say in videos and shit, man. Because, you know... Please are watching, man. You know, everybody's keeping, uh, trying to touch base with everybody out here that's trying to do any harm or anything to anybody else, man. But uh, enough about that. But I, I just wanted to, you know, make known to y'all about who uh, Tango de Hornets were. I mean, everybody knows who the Mexican Mafia is, man, man. You know, they're, they're not a gang, man. They're an organization, man. Uh, and they're, you know, there's there's two, uh, two of them, man. You know what I'm saying? But... There's one in Califas in California, one in San Anto, man, out here in Texas, man. But I'm going to mention all that, you know. So, uh, 
This all started when the Mexican Mafia, who are an organized crime family that run the South, which is based in Texas and and ran the prisons out here. Right? <clears throat> There's also another Mexican Mafia organization that, that is based in California. But you know, we, us Raza, man, we call it Califas, man. But over uh, there in California, the Mexican Mafia is a different Mafia organization that came out first before the Mexican Mafia in Texas, who are better known as Mexicana Me. Um, Herb Huerta came down from Cal Califas, from California to Texas to start his own organization back in the early 80s. The Mexican Mafia in California, their stamp has like a hand stamp. It's like a hand, like you know what I'm saying, and it's all colored in. And um, they also have other Mexican heritage symbols that they represent. You know what I'm saying, like the snake, the cactus, the mountains, uh, the sun, all that. Uh, the Mexicana me in Texas have the sun with two daggers, the pyramid, eagle, snake, and cactus, all in one stamp. These two farmers did have a war at one time, but since squashed their beef and have a manifesto, which is their word written down meaning peace. They got paz, you know, paz, you know what I'm saying? Uh, more in those terms. So the Mexican mafia I'm going to talk about are the Mexicana me from Texas. That's the one I, you know, I'm going to talk about that because that's, you know, they're from Texas and that's where I'm from. Um, so also the Tango Orejones who are from San Antonio, Texas, these are the goons that were going to squash, you know, like I said, uh, Takashi 69 if they got a hold of him. I guess you can say Takashi 69 has nine lives. <laughs> Anyhow, back to what I was saying. Uh, Mexican and me are actually ba based in San Antonio, Texas. That's where their capital is at. Anyhow, the Mexican Mafia had a lot of down homeboys from San Antonio, man, from San Anto, who did not, who did a lot of their dirty work. Uh, these homeboys were referred to as Skina Firmes, or like down homeboys, you know what I'm saying? Back in, back in the days. So for quite a while, the Skina Firmes were ending up doing more time and ending up in the hole. And the Mexican Mafia at that time for or ended up for uh, they're doing more time ended up in the hole for the Mexican Mafia at that time. The Fidmas didn't have any issues because they wanted to join the Fama at that time. You know, there was a lot of homies, you know what I mean? And they and they would do whatever necessary to join the Mexican Mafia. A lot of Fidmas became pros prospects. We call them prospectos, which is the next step to being a part of the Mexican Mafia. Once you become a prospect, you have to have a padrino, you know, a godfather, to make sure you are Mexican Mafia material. Once that is confirmed, and of course, you have to do more work to be blessed and baptized into the Mexican Mafia. So now, once you're in the Mexican Mafia, there's no way out, man. You know what I'm saying? It's blood in, blood out, bro. Once you're in, you're in, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, you you know, you got to really think about before you join, you know, you do camels and shit and all that. And you really got to believe, man, that if you're caught on, if that's the lifestyle you want, man, you know, don't do it just because at that time you want to fit in. And be a part of something because you're not at that time, you know, and and you don't have that much time, you know. You might have a nickel's eight year sentence, and you know what I'm saying, or three year sentence, or whatever, four year, and then you you know you, you still see a light at the end of, of the tunnel, man. You really, really got to know that's what you want if it's really in your quota, man. Then you follow through with it a hundred and ten percent without looking back. You know what I'm saying? And you just you gotta be feed me and 
fiel y fuerte, man. You gotta have it all in you, man. You know what I'm saying? And you can't, like, like, uh, think twice or having second thoughts. Once you have a second thought, don't do it, man, because your heart's not in it all the way, man. You know what I mean? That's why, that you know, the Mexican Mafia have the, you know, the realest, man. They, they, you know, they want the fucking dudes that are fucking gonna be down and do work, man. No hesitation. You know what I'm saying? Anyhow. Um, need not to mention the Mexican Mafia is the state's most violent prison organization with us which is also known as Mexicanami or La M. The Mafia is not a gang, it's an organization. Un unlike like the Orejones, um, let's see. Unlike, okay, let's see. The organization which is known as Mexicanami or La M. The Mexican Mafia is not a gang, it's, it's an organization. The Mexican Mafia have has a constitution to where all members must abide by as other organizations if they want peace treaty their main person who's the main person who started la M out here in san antonio was herb huerta who started it back in the 80s the title of the uh and he holds the title of the president for life. He's still in it. He's still, you know what I'm saying? Uh, president, he's still going 110%, 113%. Anyhow, since the Mexican Mafia runs San Antonio, anything going down, the Mexican Mafia gets gets uh, a cut from it. If you, Which is, you know, like the dime. Where they call it the dime, where they get 10%, man. You, you're selling anything, man. In San Anto, bro, or wherever there's or, uh, Mexican Mafia members, and you're selling any type of drugs or anything, man, uh, you, you're you going to pay. You got to pay the dime, man. And uh, that's just one of the reglas, you know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, if you don't agree, there will be consequences. Uh, the Mexican Mafia are best known for dealing drugs, contract killing, prostitutions, large-scale robberies, gambling, weapons, and everything imaginable. All right, check this out, people. I'm going to change it up a little bit and get to the reason why the Mexican Mafia and the Orojones went at each other. All right. Uh, I want to, uh, but before I do that, I want to let y'all know how the owners how the Orejones became to be a gang in prison. First, you can more or less see who is in the Orejones gang is by their tattoos. That's how more or less you can tell, you know, them apart from the Mexican Mafia and the, and the Tango Orejones. The Tango, uh, they'll have like the Spurs logo, like the Tango Orejones, they have like the Spurs logo, uh the 210 area code tatted 210 uh uh the tower you know and they'll wear like san antonio spurs wear you know most of the time but there's around around 2000 members in san antonio and bear county area well to the point the homeboys that were doing the work for the Mexican Mafia started getting tired and felt that they were being used to do all their dirty work and not feeling appreciated. So the homeboys that had let me see, so who had pool got together and made their own gang called the Orejones, and uh, which means like ears you know the oreja oreja means ears so the orejones like they hear everything what's going on man you know what i'm saying uh so in in time their numbers got big and they finally went to war with the mexican mafia which they call them 
the they call them the letras you see the Mexican mafia is an organization and the orejones are a gang the orejones don't have to report when they get out of prison unlike the mexican mafia you know that's the difference between the mexican mafia's organization they get out you got to report and all that tango orejones they get out you know they they're still their own people you know what i'm saying uh they don't you know they don't have to report they don't have to you know re answer to nobody and shit like that you know that's the difference between both of them the orejones consider each one of themselves equal to each other anyhow the mexican ma mafia and the orejone and the orejones had a bloodbath in prison san antonio is the mecca of the tango orejones the only way you can join and become a tango orejon is in prison there's another tango that came out gang out there called the tango blast tango blast is from houston and they have quite a number of them they also are called the four horsemen which are from houston dallas fort worth and austin the four horsemen are also called puro tango blast there are other gangs in texas called vayucos from the valleys corpitos from corpus christi but check this out. In prison, the Tango Orejones were known as the down motherfuckers, man. And since they're from San Antonio, the other Tangos knew that they couldn't fuck with the Tango Orejones. So the Tango Blast had to unite with Dallas, Fort Worth, and Austin just to battle with them, man. If it ever came down to it. Point blank period, man. See, the San Antonio bro, the Tango Orejones didn't have to unite with nobody, bro. It was just puro Tango Orejones. And the Tango Blast, they had to get everybody around them because majority, man, 95% of people from San Anto are down motherfuckers, bro. And they'll fucking put in work. That's just, that's just the way it is, bro. San Antonio is just a hard city, man. The Vatos Arrasa from there, bro. Hardcore, bro. Fucking to the bone, man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm talking about in general, man. Like the Mexican Mafia, those vatos. And I'm talking about Tango Orejon. It's just the raza in general, man. From San Antonio, bro. They're just hard motherfuckers. Like the Tango Blast. They're from Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin. And they even got vatos from Vallejo, man. You know what I'm saying? And all of them, they have to unite, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause single down, bro. They can't fuck with down. They can't fuck with San Antonio, bro. Nobody can. Point blank, period. It's simple. The Orejones are just some down homeboys who would do dirty work if they had to. Tango Orejones could go to war with any gang or organization if they had to. But hey, the Mexican Mafia do have numbers as well, and have been around since the early '80s. The Mexican Mafia will do whatever necessary to take you out. And they're cold-blooded, bro, to the bone. Also, in the county jail, they'll keep the Mexican Mafia isolated away from other inmates. Also, with the Tango de Juanes, they'll keep them isolated as well. They come out only an hour a day. That includes the shower and your phone calls. Sometimes the classification will mess, will mess up and... and like well not necessarily it's just like if you need to get to somebody man and like in the, and like in the laqueada and in the, the lockup bro and and you could be you could be you don't have the light you don't have the green light you're just you're good vato you know what i'm saying but uh they tell you you got to go do a camel and there's a, a, a vato that's in pc and you need to go over there and, and fucking get that motherfucker man so, you know, you're going to lie to classification, tell them, you know what, man, I got the green light, man, I'm, I'm PC. So then you get there, you know what I'm saying? And then once you, you catch that dude slipping, if you can, you know, touch base with this fool, you, you can do your work, you know what I'm saying? You got to catch this fool, do your, your shit. But not every time, it, you know, you be able to touch base with the cat, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, man. You know, 
but uh after a while you know if you can't do if you can't catch this cat then you call classification back and tell them you know what man i lied to you da 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 then they'll send you back to where you belong but uh yeah man so you could do that man you know what i mean if you really got to go and do and do some work let me see where was i at uh then the the let me see we'll get up john okay also when you're locked up in the county jail or even in prison you need to mind your own business especially if you are running solo yeah man if you're running solo man you better, you better mind your own business man if you think you're billy badass and and you stick your nose where it don't belong you will be dealt with man and that means kicking your ass and even probably getting stabbed man to put you in a suburban man or whatever the case may be back to the mexican mafia and the tango de Jones. they are still at war i think man i'm not really for sure about that and uh so there are other prison organizations in texas like the texas syndicate pistoleros barrio aztecas raza unidas the border brothers uh PRM, the Texas Chicano Brotherhood. There's a lot of farmers, man, organizations that are are out there in Texas, man. You know what I'm saying? And all the fucking prisons out there in the federal prisons, also uh, in in the Texas prisons, man. Uh, there's also Tri City Bombers, Mexicans, Texas Mafia, uh, and lots more. But I only want to talk about the gangs that are here in San Antonio, by San Antonio. Well, if you have any questions, man, that's more or less, you know, the rundown was going down, man. Uh, if you have any questions, man, leave a comment below, man. Uh, I really appreciate if you can like, subscribe to my channel, man. This is Big Cass, man. Sananto Chuchan, I'm out.